In, the, in this video I'm going to repair, be repairing an Akai MPK Mini with a uh, bad USB connector. Uh, I do warn you this video is going to be rather long and boring because I filmed the entire repair from start to finish unedited so you're going to see a lot of dumb things in the way. Without any further ado, I'm, get, I'm getting on with the repair. Enjoy. Okay, this is uh, this is an Akai MPK Mini. Um, one of the main things that goes wrong with these is the, the uh, USB connector busts off the board. You can, you can hear it rattling around in there. And right, I'm gonna film as much as I can and hopefully edit it into something. Um, it's not a major repair, just uh, for somebody who's never seen it before. I'm putting this video up there. And I'm going to try to film the repair in its entirety. Uh, that, that way, in case I forget to say something, you'll, you'll see me do it. Okay, this connector, there's uh, you pull back on the brown edge a little bit and it releases this cable. Okay, here's the, uh, the end that fell out. Now, one of the problems that could be bad is if you can see that this is over here is where the connector was supposed to be. And if for any reason uh, it got hit a little bit too hard, it'll literally rip those traces right up the, off the board and then the repair becomes very, very difficult. You have to run uh, jumper wires, things of that nature. Okay, there's a whole bunch of black screws here. When you lift this up, there's going to be rubber pads. You want to kind of protect those pads when you get them out because if you get dust and dirt in between the, the pad and the circuit board it's going to lead to premature failure. I've seen online uh, quite a few people like to modify these keyboards by putting a little shim between the, uh, the pad and the, the contactor on the board. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that at all. Personally, I, I use a, uh, a regular full-size MIDI keyboard when I'm recording drums. I'm, I'm not a big fan of pads. But these little Akai units seem to be really popular. Lots of screws, right? They just keep going. All of these knobs have to be removed and what I've been doing myself is so I'll just lift up on the board a little bit. And that pulls them all off in one shot. Okay, there's two pads. There's a main pad that's already off and then there's the other one on the control. I'm just going to carefully remove that. 
turn it upside down and put it out of the way. You don't really even have to have to take these out. I don't know why I did. Just cover them up with a piece of cardboard. And here's the knobs that came off the front. And again, that gives you a closer look at the board. This camera focuses very well. You can see that that connector came clean off the board. And that's just one of the issues with uh, these micro, I believe that's a micro USB. That may just kind of happen to rip off the board now. Give me a second and I'm going to get a new one. I'll be right back. Nice. It's nice when you have a whole bag full of these things. Um, sometimes it, it might not go on just right. So, I mean, if you're going to order the part to replace this online, order two. They're usually only a dollar or two more to have two. That way, if you accidentally screw up the first one, you got another shot at a fresh one. Because once these once these things get a bunch of solder on them and you move them in and out, in and out they're kind of hard to clean up and get it back in again. Okay. I, I just I use this vice grip to weight the board down so it doesn't jump all over the place. Calamari for lunch. I'll be having that in about an hour. I can smell it cooking in the background. All right, are we still rolling here? Now I don't know how well this camera can actually zoom. But I'm going to break the video here and see if I can zoom in on the connector while I work on it. Okay, I'm back. I, I hope that's coming in good enough. If not, I'm, I'm also going to add some high-res photos in the middle. One of the first things I like to do is clean up the board. I kind of have to or else the thing's not going to sit flat. So, <laughs> I like to use a pair of these so I can actually see the board. Hell getting old, isn't it? Okay, we got a problem one here, and what I want to do is zoom in on this. This is one of those problem repairs where the entire trace or the two connectors on the USB port got literally ripped off the board with the connector. And I'm going to try to zoom in on that so you can actually see. I'm definitely going to take some photos of it, so I'll be breaking this video again. That's kind of surprised me. I mean, I've been a musician for you know well over 30 years, and 
XLR cables and quarter inches and five pin MIDI connectors don't break the way these USB things do and the whole reason these break is they, they just lay on the board and there's really not much force behind them. Anyway, hopefully I'm going to try to show this to you. Yeah, got bad focus there. Okay, I'm going to cut out and do a couple photos. Alright, now what we found out here was that uh, three of the traces have been ripped away when the USB connector got ripped off the board. Uh, what I'm going to do to repair this is put in a new connector and connect the pins that don't have traces with Kynar wire. Uh, this is something we used to do a lot in the 70s and the 80s when traces on boards would get burned out. You would just jump the leg uh, of one component to another component using using this wire. It's a 30 gauge wire that is meant for doing wire wrapping and it's just a technique that stuck with me over the years. Um, instead of throwing out a board because the traces are gone it's very easy to put it away. In fact there have been several times when I've gotten boards that were cracked clear across 20, 30, 40 traces that I was able to get going with you know a series of jumpers on it. I know, I mean sometimes that's extreme but sometimes you don't have a board or it's in an industry where it's critical and you you need to get it back up. So those are things that you can do. Uh, I'm going to be shooting this video in pieces as I as I work along. First I'm going to clean up what's left. Sometimes a, a trace will pull up. Sometimes one of the traces will pull up and short out to another trace. So you want to make sure that all remnants of the existing trace are gone. And as you're looking at this board, you'll see that there's two traces still showing. And if you scratch lightly with a razor blade you can expose the copper that you can solder onto sometimes that's okay sometimes it's not sometimes I'm able to run it just a little trace from where the component is to the to that if uh, if I can't really get a good bind uh, onto the connectors here I would actually run a wire around to the other side of the board where it's where it's easier to mount I'm gonna, I'm gonna try a couple of different things here okay now I've already used the solder wick so the board is nice and smooth what I'm going to do on this if I can find my thing I had a really small pair of duckbill pliers that I used to use for this and I, I just can't find them right now this second. But what I want to do is bend up the second and third pins on this USB connector because I'm going to be attaching wires directly to them. So I'm going to take a closer look there and see if that's even necessary. Okay, what I'm what I'm looking at is 
Yeah, I'm, I'm going to lift up those two legs to make them a little bit easier to solder onto. You want to be careful not to bend them up so much that you ground them out to the to the housing. Okay. okay now I'm gonna I'm gonna tack a couple of ends of that. Connector onto the board. What I did is I, I tacked the opposite end's caddy corner, and in case it's just up in the air a little bit, what you can do is apply just a, a littlest amount of pressure and make sure it sits flat. Let me look at that. That's totally flat. Now the, the main support for this type of USB connector comes through these ground lugs. And on so many of these Akai's, it appears as if there was, was barely any solder holding them in place. But that really doesn't have much to do with bad USB connectors because they're so fragile to begin with. Even if they are soldered really well, they're going to fail. Even the work I do here on this will eventually fail. Um, it's either this connector is simply going to wear out or it's going to break off the board again. Okay, now the two, there's five pins in here. One is case and one is electrical ground. So the, if you count from the left, pins one and two get actually get shorted together and tied to a pad. And pin 5 all on the other side is power. Okay, now I get to, to make some wire jumpers. These, the gap between the pad I need to solder to and the pin is about less than a sixteenth of an inch. So I'm going to cut a smaller piece of this wire. This isn't the correct stripping tool for this. I, I have one in the other room. I'm just being a little bit lazy. Okay, if you strip that wire, you can expose a nice open end of it, which I'm going to use as a as a bridge. It's always a good idea if you uh, tin the copper, the exposed copper first. Little tiny solder balls. I'm going to tin that 
in the legs also. Working with something that's small, I really should have flux, but I just don't have any right now. Okay, those are tinned. You really don't need to tin this Kynar. It's uh, semi, I'm not sure if it's pre tinned, but, but it's very, very receptive to solder. I don't want to say something here that's, that's wrong. put a little bit on there. I don't think I tin the connector quite enough. Get it on there. It's gonna it's gonna be good and strong. And it's definitely not gonna short out to anything else. Now, uh, in case you guys hadn't noticed, I have a big pair of magnifiers on my head. That can be a little bit older, and the eyes aren't what they were when I was 20 and 30. So I was looking for it. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do that second pin. And sometimes you got to ask, is it really worth it to do this much stuff for a machine that's only worth a little bit? But it's all about accomplishing something, I guess. All right. Okay, now I got the two wires attached. I'm going to cut them to the approximate length to get them to their to their appropriate pads. I'm going to take some high-res pictures of the finished product if the video isn't coming out all that well. Okay, you can just uh, push those wires down onto their pads, making sure that they don't touch anything they're not supposed to. Okay. 
just really quickly tack them down because there's a possibility too much heat will make that other connection let go. Just like I did right there. Okay, that's where you gotta be a little bit careful. And you gotta clean whatever solder is on there back up. Notice me push some new solder in there. That helps whatever solder's in there get flowing onto the onto the wick a little better. All right, so take two. Come do this again. There's probably 20 of you guys out there yelling, you ain't got the right equipment. Yeah, you're probably right. Okay. And in case you're wondering, yes, we are going to check that connector for shorts before it gets all put back together. What I just what just happened where I melted it off of the connector happens because I'm working with such a short piece of wire. And the work does have to be done so quickly. If I had wrapped the wire around the board, I, I really wouldn't have run into that problem, but the board would have looked really messy. But in both cases it would have functioned. Jove, I do believe we have it. Now I have a uh, little test cable here somewhere. This is the kind of thing that I need to have out before I start making a video. On the upside, I found my wine opener. Alright, I found my tester. It's just a, uh, it's just a cut uh, USB, I forget if this is a micro or mini, I always forget the names. Anyway, the idea is you plug it in there and all four of the pins and ground, ground need to be isolated. 
I'm checking for no shorts. Okay, so black to anything is open. Black to ground is black. To black that yeah, black to the shield is ground, and that's supposed to be. Okay, white is the power. And you can also check your connectivity straight back to the board to make sure you got your pin connected right. Uh, sometimes you'll see that it, it appears like it's soldered here on this USB connector, but it's just not quite touching. Okay, now what I am seeing is that I have a short... Oh, no, I don't. I thought I did. Check red power again. Okay, I thought I had a, a short between power and I don't. Okay, you're going to see some ohms between the uh, 5 volts and the ground pin. That's the resistance of the circuit. Okay, everything looks good. No shorts. I'm going to cut this for a second. Well, anyway, as we figured out, everything is uh, not shorted. And then, before I even bother plugging this in, I like to test that the signals actually go through to the, uh, to the spots on the board that they need to go to. we do. We got connectivity there. Okay. All right, now everything works there. At this point, what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to I'm going to take this to a computer and plug it in because I'm looking for a particular response from the lights that only happens when you connect it to an active uh, USB. You can't just put a, a wall jack with 5 volts in it because it won't uh, do the handshake and give the, the successful light sequence. And actually I might be able to show you that. The right one. Anyway, I'm going to switch this now and we're going to go back to a computer and uh, we'll see what happens. Okay, now I have the board and this USB is connected into a computer. And what I'm looking for is this light's going to blink twice and then come on solid. Boom. There you go. And let me show you that again. This is a functioning board. Okay, that's what you're looking for. Now I'm going to go back and video the reassembly of this and then I'll reassemble, I'll go back and video the, uh, the testing. Alright, I'm just uh, videoing the, the reassembly. Now it's, it's been out for a little while so there's a chance that some dust or something might have gotten onto these. Uh, they're relatively fragile, I guess. You don't really want to wipe them down with anything. Um, when, when they go bad, the, the repair of those is another topic entirely. But usually what happens is the, uh, the conductive material on the back of these pads just starts to wear thin. And while you might see a lot of videos online telling you how to repair that by cleaning them or blowing them out with air. 
I will guarantee you this 100,000% that those repairs are only temporary and fleeting. The proper way to repair this to get any sort of longevity out of it is you got to replace the rubber pads. And I'm sure, and I'm sure going to catch some flames on that, but you know I've tried just about everything else. You know, cleaning them, air, putting new conductive paint on, trying a lead pencil. Um, there's a few other things, but none works as well. I was putting on a new pad. When I turn these screws on, I don't tighten them all the way down until I have them all in. And the, the reason for that is um, not everything aligns up perfect. And if you tighten down the first and second screws, by the time you get down to the last screw, you might have problems putting it in because the PCB doesn't line up with the plastic perfectly. It might not be as big a problem now in 2014 that it was years ago, but I've still seen it happen and I still don't fully tighten them down until I got all the screws in. I know you might see me doing another thing. I actually never consciously thought about it in years. I, I'll turn the screw backwards until I feel it drop, and that means that it, it's fallen into the existing threads in the plastic. If you don't do that, you're going to be cutting new threads, and you run a, a risk of stripping out the plastic. Which I've seen a lot of that. Sometimes you'll even hear it like you did just there. And when you found a thread, the screws go in a lot easier than if you're off the thread. Before I tighten down on that, yeah, I'm just checking the heights of the rubber. Sometimes these get. Uh, Feel them. I'm holding the board down, feeling that these are still pressing. Sometimes the pads might not line perfectly up. The drum pads you kind of can't tell because they're always stiff, but these buttons do have a, a spongy feel to it. don't want to over tighten, you just want to bottom them out and, and that's it. Plastic strips. And if you strip out these screws in the center, your pads are never going to work because they're going to keep pushing that board away from your pads. up exactly where it's supposed to be. Um, when putting that board in, you kind of got to make sure that that USB does go through because if you start tightening screws down and the USB port is up on the plastic, there's a chance you can rip it. Uh, all that work you just did, you can rip that USB connector right back off. Very fragile, fragile, fragile things. Okay, putting the connector back down. Make sure that that gray bar is pulled back. You don't pull it back far, it just comes back about a sixteenth of an inch. And 
and the cable does slip in very, very easily. It's the brown clip here that actually holds it into place so you're not going to be pushing it hard. Front end over the keys first, push it down. Now I have seen quite a few of these that I know that other people have opened up and what they've done, they will pinch this cable and if you pinch this cable down, there's a chance that you can damage the cable and if you damage the cable your keys are never going to work and I've seen it go so bad as to not allow the unit to boot when the cable is on. So just note of caution, be looking out for the looking out for the cable. Now I haven't actually run this through a test yet, so what I do, because these screws take such a darn long time to put in, I just put two to hold the whole thing in place. And that's going to let me know if I got a, a cable pinch or anything like that. And I, I don't even need to put the knobs on. And I'm gonna, we're going to go in the other room and, and test this with, uh, with a Linux system. Okay, I'm ready to test this. I wanted to, wanted to show you the, the complete testing procedure under Ubuntu. Um, I, you start by running the uh, jack control. And you want to start it and then do your connection windows. And you'll see that there's only one MIDI capture. Then you run a program called QMIDI ARP, which is going to capture uh, MIDI event messages. And now you see that it shows up in both the readable and writable clients. At this point, you want to plug in your Akai or whatever keyboard you happen to be testing by USB. You'll see it comes on, and now you have a new MIDI capture device, which happens to be the, the Akai. You grab that, link it over to QMIDI ARP, and then we pull up QMIDI ARP's event log, and we enable a log. Oops, sorry. I, I lost my log. Oh, okay. That was my bad. I hit the wrong button, didn't realize where the log went to. MIDI Capture 2 over to QMIDI or it broke because I stopped the program. Okay, here is the event log. Let's make that big so you can see it. seeing this. It's going to happen every time we hit a key now it's going to be routed to the MIDI ARP log and we're going to see the note on and velocity information. That gives us a way to, to test every key without actually having to uh, hook up a keyboard. And you'll see if it, when the note goes on you'll get your velocity on, you let go of it you get your velocity off and I can check every key without ever having to hook this up to anything. Okay, and all the keys work and you can check, check your velocity by hitting it lighter and harder and you'll see the, the velocity number go up and down. Also these controls, I wish I could see that screen better but unfortunately I can't. Every time you turn one of these it's sending out more MIDI information and that way you know that your, your pots are working. Test all them. Likewise, the pads. Okay, they're all going. Now, not all of the buttons are going to send MIDI information. The uh, octave up and octave down, those are what they're going to do is, is change the MIDI note that the keys send. So, the way if you hit that up, it's going to go red. If you hit it down, it's going to go back off. But you can see that right now I'm hitting a note. It's called the uh, uh, that's note 58. If I go octave up, it should be 12 higher. And it is. It's 70. Those are hex values. I, I'm actually, I'm sorry if that's 12 up. Yeah, these are ASCII values. Um, 
decimal values. Thank you. All right, you can just hit these and make sure that they're lighting up and doing something, and, and that's about it. I mean, oh, we can put the arpeggiator on, and you'll see that it sends out a lot more notes. And hold it on and hit the tap to slow down the tempo. You'll see it slow down. Speed it up, sends more. And that's about it. So this is a fully working Akai uh, that's ready to ship, play, or do whatever you want. Bye!